Hey, welcome to a very special Heart for the House service at Good Life Church. We have got a massive service in store for you today. Um, it is our Heart for the House party. Once a year, we have an offering that is an opportunity at every campus for every Good Lifer to say, I'm in. Yes. I want to be a part of the extension of God's kingdom through Good Life Church. I'm yeah. believing for big things and I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. <laughs> and uh, we, it's always a party because of a couple of things. First yeah. of all, we know that good things happen with the finances, that because yes. of our giving, people's lives are literally changed. The other thing we have a party about is that God is doing great things in and through yes. our generosity. Right. We know we're honouring God. Yeah. But I tell you what, there's a precedent in all through the Bible yeah. where there's great offerings, where there's extravagant yeah. offerings, that there are great parties. Every and time. so today is exactly the same. We are going to yeah. party. So yeah. we're ready to go. You yeah. ready to party? I am. Right. We're going to party like if, just imagine, yeah. if the Wallabies actually managed to beat the All Blacks and the Bledisloe. You'd party. I would that. party, but if you saying that kind of hurts. Okay. I, I party okay. like that every year when the All Blacks win because right. that's um, how it works, right? How about it's a party as good as if the Black Caps ever won a test versus Australia? Yeah, that hurt. <laughs> That hurt. Would you party? Oh, look, I would party. I would love to have that kind of yeah, party. Yeah, you'd love to, wouldn't you? would be awesome if it ever Let's happened. Have a party. Anyway. Let's have a Black okay, Caps party. We're going to party like if our offering meant that people met Jesus. That kind of party. Well, how about we party as if we knew that our offering was going to honour God through mm. all of our life? Yeah, I love that. See, we can't yet gather all together in big groups, full Sunday service congregations. So what we can do is we can have parties at people's houses. So all the way up to about 20 people can have a party, it's all true. the way down to a party of one. However you're gathering, however many people you're gathering with, we want to say welcome to this amazing Sunday service. It is going to be incredible. We're so glad that you're here. Now, yeah. we do have some party resources going mm -hmm. out. And so there was a competition was. this week. Yeah. And uh, at every campus, a $100 Coles voucher was ready to Pretty go good. for the winning party that put in. Now, that what they had to do mm -hmm. was in the form of a haiku poem. <laughs> they had to let us know why their party was the best Heart for the House party. Yeah, that's good. And we're going to be announcing that yeah. winner soon. I need to let you know one of the entrants, though. Oh. This was... Okay, here we go. This was wild. <laughs> Here's the haiku. Okay. You ready for it? I'm ready for it. Heart for House is good... Because I said it is good, Heart for House is good. Uh, I Do we really have a winner? Hope, Do we have a winner? I really hope that the winning haiku is better than that one. <laughs> I right, know who yeah, wrote that, so no offence, I love you a lot. But please, someone, have a better haiku than that. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to be announcing the winner very, very soon. Um, but I want to welcome every single Good Life campus. I want to welcome the Newcastle Good Life crew, wherever you're meeting, whatever house you're meeting in. I want to welcome the Maitland Good Life crew with yeah. Pastor James and Mel Anson. We yes. love you. We miss you. I want to welcome the Toronto Good Life crew Come led on. by incredible Pete and Give Beck up, Layla. We love you. I want to welcome the Foster Tunkari Good Life crew. You are family and we love you. And your pastors, Ben and Steph Perrin. With the parents. And of course, Good Life Auckland. Yes. We love you as well. Tim and Steph Salvini and all the, all the band there. We love you so much. And even if you're not from Good Life, but you're joining us, welcome. Thank you welcome. so much. Put it in the chat. Yeah. Uh, give a big ups for your yeah. campus, Pastor. We love your campus. Write down yeah. what campus you're in. And uh, I don't know, which of the campus pastor couple you think is the better looking one? Oh. <laughs> anyway, They're no, don't do that. Amazing. Do something. Who's your favourite? Um, <laughs> look, what we do know is that in Auckland right now, this is the yeah. first Good Life Heart for the House party with Good Life Auckland. You guys yes. are making history yeah. and we're backing you. You're starting a new normal. Pioneers, hey. As, oh my gosh. Yeah. Pioneers. And uh, what you're doing is you're starting something, making history that's going to spread across the nation of New Zealand. That's and right. we love you so much. Love we're it. standing with you. Yes. Big ups to the Auckland yeah. history making gang yes. right now. We love you. So I reckon we, could, we should kick off this Heart for the House party we with some praise. I reckon the band are ready to go. Come on. Uh, they're sounding like they're ready to go. I can so, hear it. Uh, Stand your feet. Let's do it. <laughs> let's get to it. Come on. Come on, let's stand and sing. Hope is broken free. And hope is broken free. Spirit alive and freely moving joy. 
Unspeakable has won my heart And now I'm running wild I can feel it coming in the air Faith and love have changed the atmosphere I'm on top of the world I made a lot of your love Then I say that we found out oh, 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 oh. Come on, let's sing it again, hope it's broken free Broken free spirit alive and freely moving joy. Unspeakable has won my heart and now I'm running wild. I can feel it coming in the air. Faith and love, come on. Faith and love change the atmosphere. His spirit lives in me. Ever my reality, your love has broken free. Christ is my identity. Your spirit lives in me. Ever. Brilliant. I love praising God. It doesn't just blow the cobwebs out. It creates an atmosphere, an environment for your life and for those around you for breakthrough. So come on, I want to pray for you right now. God's got a breakthrough for you. Father, I thank You right now that You are moving in our lives. You're moving on our lives. Yeah. You're moving through our lives. Lord God, to do a great thing in us. Lord God, and through us to bring change to the world. God, I thank You today. Lord God, for breakthrough financially, breakthrough in health, breakthrough for families and relationally. God, breakthrough in communities. God, I pray breakthrough, God, over every Good Life campus, every Good Life for every family. God, I thank You that You are taking us from one level to the next. Lord God, Father, I thank You that You uplift our eyes and our spirits to see greater and more. Lord God, that You can do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine or think. I declare that breakthrough yeah. over every good lifer in Jesus' Name. Amen. Yeah. I, come on, let's go back. Let's keep on praising God. Go back to the band. Keep singing. Yeah. We're believing for breakthrough. Let's go.
You know what I love about that? We are not just singing empty words. We have hope because of our Saviour. And there's a whole lot of stuff going on in the world right now, but we have hope in our own lives and we have hope that we get to take out into our world and into our community. And that is the power of a song like that. It's not just empty words. It's not singing for the sake of singing. There is power when we sing words like that within our Saviour, we have found hope. That is a beautiful thing. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And what a great thing to sing on a party. I mean, What a great party song. Why not? I loved it. I love your singing. Now we, wow. He doesn't love my singing. Let's just put that You're out there. Good. You're pretty good. You've improved. <laughs> wow. Thanks again. We'll move on from that right now. We actually have a Good Life Party guru. The by guru. The name of, well, I wouldn't say she's the guru, but she's certainly a guru. We she's have quite there. a few party she's gurus a, in this she's place. She's up there for sure. But yeah, Rach Gibbs, actually, um, we just wanted to actually bless and thank one of our amazing legend Good Life families. And, uh, you know, there's so many who do so many things. So many. And um, But we wanted to just pick one. So we've got Rach now, now, on the job We're, we're about to get, so get ready yeah. for that. The team's getting ready for that. Yes. But right now, what's going to happen, uh, if you're on our online, uh, goodlifechurch.online.church, uh, in the chat, what's going to happen right now is that the campus pastors are going to let you know the winner of the Haiku Challenge. Yes. And they get the $100 of party people food and all kinds yes. of stuff, the Coles voucher. And so they're going to put into the chat now yeah. the winner yeah. and the winning Haiku yes. that got them and their party people if the big the voucher. If the winning Haiku is the one you read earlier, I'm going to laugh so hard. Now, <laughs> look, that Haiku came from a Newcastle Good Lifer. Right. And I say in Jesus' name, no. <laughs> You can't win with that. It was actually pretty funny. I know I mocked it. Before, Look, it was but funny, it was but yes, yes. really. Yes. Anyway, yeah. it's in the chat right that now. Check happening. for the haiku. Mm-hmm. Give it a thumbs yeah. up. Tell us what you reckon. Thumbs yeah. down if it's not that and good. That's your haiku. You're getting that hundred dollars well for your played. party. That's well so played on your cool. haiku skills. Yes. It's a party haiku. <laughs> now, speaking of parties, let's get to our party guru, let's get it, Rachel Rach. Gibbs. Come on. Alrighty, good luck. We are here in the beautiful town of Redhead and uh, we're on a secret mission. There's a particularly incredible good lifer who has a business just around the corner. This is Loz and Gareth Hutchison Green. They own Redhead uh, Bakery. They are just absolutely incredible people. They go to Good Life Toronto. Um, They have served generously for so many years. They love Good Life and they are just some of the most generous people that you will ever meet. And so we just get the honor and privilege of giving a small token of our appreciation and um, just showing them a little bit of love. So let's go. It's just up here. P.S. Their caramel cheesecake. Good life is founded on that, so it's perfect. Come on out, come outside. Oh, look at this presentation. COVID safe. Hello. Look, this is Gareth and Lauren. They are incredible. We just wanted to give you a little small token of our appreciation because we love and if I'd hug you but that's not legal I'm pretty sure but we just we just love you Good Life Church love you and um, Pastor David Beck and Pastor Pete Beck are so proud of you you are generous people you've you've been a part of Heart for House for all of the years before I was even here and um, we just appreciate you and um, we're keen to be able to be a part of your journey and love that you're a part of our family no embrace the flowers we love being a part of this church. We yes. came to this church to be part of the community and that's exactly what it's allowed us to do. So definitely, <laughs> um, definitely very, very blessed to be part of this Yes. Church. We love you guys. And um, I'm going to hand it back to Pastor Dave back at stage. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. We love the Hutchinson Greens and what they bring yeah. to family good life. Now, I tell you what, if you are anywhere near Redhead, you've got to get to the bakehouse. Yes. Quality coffee. I know you're not a coffee drinker. No, but the food is But it like... is quality. And the food is good. I do need to Amazing. warn you, though, the caramel cheesecake, slightly addictive. <laughs> so maybe if you're on a diet... Don't go to the... It's no, true. don't go for the coffee. The coffee's fine. It's true. But Gareth it's and Lauren, we Brilliant. love you. Yeah. Love you guys. Yeah, such amazing dream teamers. And we have so many dream teamers and people who call Good Life Home who invest not only of their time, but also their talent and their treasure. And um, as we come around our weekly tithes and offerings, our opportunity to be generous to the house of God and be obedient to the Word of God when He says to bring our tithes into the storehouse, I want to pray for you. I know that you are blessed as you do this in obedience to Jesus. So I wanna pray for you today as we do that. So Father, 
I just pray for every good life right now. Lord God, as we bring our tithes, we bring our offering to You. Father God, I thank You. You have promised You will open yes. the windows of heaven. Yes. I thank You. You have promised You will rebuke the devourer, yes. Lord God. Lord Jesus, I thank You that this brings us a covering over our lives, over our families, yes. over our finances. And God, Amen. I declare that. I prophesy that over every good life right now. Uh -huh. God, as we come in obedience, God, I thank You that You unlock heaven. You unlock heaven's blessings over our lives, but also over our community and over come our... On. On, Church yes. and over our families in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you as you yeah. give. The details will be on the screen. Yes. And uh, or if you're not catching them there, go straight to our website, <laughs> uh, goodlifechurch.com. Dot au and uh, all the details yeah. are there ready ready to go. So I tell you, what, we've had a series, we a have. preaching series for the last number of weeks called Why yep. the World Needs Good Life and yeah. it has been an absolute barnstormer. It has. And uh, this is the last week that we get to share on the reason of why the world needs good life. Yeah. So um, it, look, it's an audacious statement because yeah. we know the world needs Jesus. My, does the world need Jesus yeah. and right now especially. Yeah. Uh, but then Jesus says, the world needs my church. That's how I'm going to get my That's message right. out. But when we right. realise who God's called us to be with unique DNA, unique calling, God's put us all together as one team across five uh, campuses in two countries to literally change the world. You can be confident in that. Yeah. And this latest instalment is going to be absolutely fantastic. We've got stories and testimonies of people whose lives have literally been changed. One, at least one from every campus. And this is going to be amazing. Why yes. the world needs good life. Let's go to the video. I was in second year of uni and I was in the party scene and I was drinking until I would black out. And I had enough, so I Googled Red Frogs Newcastle. And that's how I found Good Life Church. Sarah was chronic MS, unexpectedly single dad of two very busy girls, and I've just broken my hand. Since I moved here 12 years ago, in a place that was very foreign, in a country that was different, I should have felt out of place, but thanks to Good Life Church, I was never alone. I get these out of my eyes first. I'm emotional because my kids love Christ <laughs> and they're in their twenties. I was going through some difficult times emotionally and um, Karen suggested that I come to church. There was the times where um, during church, he says, um, if anyone would like us to pray for them, um, put your hand up and without even thinking about it, I, I just felt my hand go up. I moved from Newcastle, Australia to Auckland, New Zealand with my husband. We had our very first baby during a global pandemic and then we found out that she has cystic fibrosis. When I was 30 years old, I had an encounter with God and it gave me such an incredible passion to see my children raised up in the house of God and loving Jesus. That was a bit tricky because my husband didn't share my faith, but now my kids are raising their own kids in the house of God, and my youngest son is my own pastor. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in November of 1999. It has left me struggling with fatigue, memory, short-term memory, um, even long-term memory now, and mobility issues. In 2018, when the opportunity to take redundancy came up, I took that to shore up my family's financial future. We were receiving pastoral care at the time for our struggling marriage. In the end, my wife has left, and I've been left as the sole carer of my two awesome girls. <sighs> so on top of all that, in February, I've broken my hand. It's made things difficult at home. I've had Good Life family step up, provide meals, help with the girls. The Connect Group has been praying for my healing. And then two weeks after I've attended the fracture clinic at the hospital, they've seen where the break was in my hand. Miraculously, it's just healed. It's been healed. Even the doctors were amazed. It's been a difficult and, and lonely journey. Um, and without my, or without God and my Good Life family, uh, would have been unbearable. Hey guys, uh, my name is David and uh, I've been a part of Good Life Church for about 
12 years now, almost 13, and uh, my story started off in 2007 when I arrived with my family from Zimbabwe. So initially I was born in the Congo, but then we migrated over to Zimbabwe because it was a bit unsafe where we were at, and then we uh, migrated over here in Australia. So I arrived here with my um, mum and just my two sisters. As soon as we arrived, um, we felt it would be best for us to be plugged into a um, a church and continue our journey of faith. And then we came across Good Life Church and for us it was just more than a church. It was a refuge, it was friends, it was family you could say. And yeah, and for me as well, um, growing up, especially in a place that was different, that was I guess foreign and a place where I found it a bit hard to fit in here and there. I found Good Life Church as a place where I could express myself and where I could be myself, especially let's say in my teens, um, growing up, I struggled a bit with my identity. I felt it a bit challenging to um, express myself, to fit in here and there. The youth ministry of Good Life, he played a major role in um, helping me become more confident in myself, helping me believe in myself and um, helping me find my feet and find a voice. Credit to the incredible pastors, the incredible leaders who have given me a platform to just be me. I've made a whole heap of um, meaningful relationships. I've found people that I can say I, I hold on to and treasure dearly because Good Life has been such a place that has allowed me to find that. And yeah, and for me, I can just simply say that life would be completely different if it wasn't for Good Life Church. There's moments where I struggle to find confidence in chasing this opportunity or having people here that I can count on. Having father figures as well in, in this environment has meant that I was able to navigate through some tricky situations growing up and it meant that my family was well supported as well. Especially coming from a household with a um, single parent, it was a bit of a disadvantage at times, but having support from the Good Life family, from Good Life Church, it meant that some things were, um, easy to, were easier to navigate and to overcome. Like, I get the chance to do the same now provide support like I cannot repay every single person that I've encountered in Good Life Church who's um, made a difference in my life in our world but I just get to do the same for other people and just help them find their feet help them grow in their relationship with Christ and help them take a step forward to a, to a better day. I grew up in a Christian house I went to private school and you know I went to church I used to be a Sunday school teacher as a child but then when I was 15 I was out on my own Mum kicked me out of home when I was 14. I ended up going to different places and I completely rejected church, became a rebel, didn't want anything to do with it, started smoking pot, drinking, all that sort of thing. I had a um, kid when I was 18. I met him when I was 21. We became a family, blended family, because he had two children and I had one. And then we had our own children, but like for you know 20 years or so, I didn't go to church. I didn't think about anything. Like I always believed in God, but I never felt the urge to want to go and hang out. And then we started sort of going through a bit of a dark time <coughs> in life. He he lost his mother, Shane lost his mum and went through a fair bit of depression. He lost his dad and in a tragic way and found him when he was younger and like he got to kind of a suicidal point in life for a fair bit there with pretty bad depression and complicated post-traumatic stress. Um, I went through kind of like a similar thing, got pretty depressed, I ended up taking a heap of Xanax and drinking beer and driving 120 k's off the bridge into a pole because I didn't care about life in general. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we went through some pretty hectic dark times, but then when Ben and Steph started the church, like a good life just sort of, we had to surround ourselves with different people and quit our old way of life. And it, and it was just a beautiful thing, the way that it merged together because Ben in particular, but like they were so encouraging to come and have a coffee with us, come and do this, come and do that. And we just sort of wanted to live our life like them through the way that they behaved yeah. in general. It wasn't yeah. more so come and be a Christian because you love God. It was more so mm. oh, I want to have the joy in life that they have. I want to be like them. I love the way mm. they live. I really need that in my life. And that's how it sort of merged our lives together. And, and I wouldn't be without them. They're just like our family now. It doesn't feel like going to church for us it's just um, going on a Sunday and listening to music and being involved and meeting up with good people and friends like Ben's kind of like my, one of my best friends now. When you have depression and you can't get up out of bed in the morning to the point where you don't want to be alive anymore but you've got a family to support and stuff it's really important to have friends that are like um, 
that come around and say, you know, come and do this or something. Like I get emotional thinking about it because, yeah, I just, it's good to have friends like that that encourage you to live your best life and, you know, get out of the house and be with each other and connect with each other because it's something that people really need at that point. Hmm. I graduated high school in 2014 and I got accepted into University of Newcastle. So I decided to live on campus. And I loved everything about living on campus. I loved living with my friends and living five minutes away from my actual classes. But there was a very big drinking and party scene, which I got swept into pretty quickly. And it was in my second year where I saw that I was a bit unsatisfied with life and who I was becoming and what I was doing. And so I coped with that by drinking more. For the first six months of my second year, I would drink to the point of passing out every time. I got to the point where I was just had enough. I didn't want to do it anymore. And it was probably that combination of that self-realisation and some people that I'd met while living on campus. Those people were called Red Frogs. And they would come and they'd cook dinner for us every fortnight on our block. But they wouldn't just cook dinner and then leave. They would cook dinner and then they'd stay and hang around and play games and chat life. And I would look back and I'd be like, who are these people that are cooking for complete strangers that were spending their nights here for free? It seemed illogical and random and it sparked my curiosity. So with that combination, I Googled Red Frogs in Newcastle and a few more Google searches, I found Good Life Church. So for about six months, I stalked Good Life Church's social medias until I finally found the courage to rock up to a 5 p.m. service. And it was after that service that someone made the beeline to me and we made a connection. That was where I wanted to start forming a relationship with God and getting connected to the local church and growing in my faith and taking my next steps. After that, I knew straight from the beginning that I wanted to be part of Red Frogs. That I wanted to be on the other side and I wanted to help and give back and make a difference like the Red Frogs had done with me. So now I'm in my fourth year of serving with Red Frogs and I wouldn't change a thing. You know, I want to talk about the fact that we're such a young, vibrant, healthy church and that young people are embracing God and that they know, you know, that they have a hope and a future in Christ. I've been a good lifer for over 30 years, raised my children in Good Life Church, and during that time I've seen lots of amazing things happen in our community. You know, real life things that happen for people that have had challenges, everyday challenges that we all face. It's been exciting to be a part of a church that's relevant, that we're out in community, that we're embracing people, that we're, that we're realistic about you know, the life's challenges. And we're seeing change, we're seeing Christ introduced to the broader community as we go forward. And that's why it's been great for me to see my children grow up in good life. They're um, embracing living for Christ and getting out there and sharing Him with other people. To see them in uh, connect groups and youth groups and celebrating Jesus is just stirs my heart. You know, when I'm out in community and um, I run into friends or acquaintances and people who are, have challenges or, you know, are struggling, the answer is Jesus. And as good life as we have the privilege of sharing Him with those people that we meet, I think if we can be uh, just open and share from our hearts and, uh, you know, have that compassion of Christ shine through us, we're going to see more and more people know who Jesus is. Going forward with good life is, uh, you know, I'm in there for the long haul. Uh, God's good all of the time and if we can just lift him up and people see him, we're going to see change across all of our campuses and our communities. As a wife and a mum of three little kids under six years old, I just longed for them to be in God's house every week with me, worshipping God. And so there were times where that was really diff difficult because just getting them there when they could have stayed home with Dad, um, if they didn't feel like going, well, I really needed to just hold on to God and believe for, for the promises of God that, that kept me. It was like an anchor for my soul when I was praying and just believing that my kids would be in God's house. And so, you know, later on, they go through teenage years when they have challenges, they question everything. And, you know, at that time too, I really needed to hang on to God and, and the church was just an incredible strength and support around my life and my kids' lives as well. You know, not whatever it takes is what I, I wanted to do to see them grow and see them know God for themselves. And so it, it actually ended up being like Macca's meals, night after Sunday night after Sunday night. But hey, I didn't care. It was a joy to me because my kids were building relationships with people 
who were going to be like mentors to their life and speak life into them and encourage them and believe in them. And so that was just so incredibly valuable to me. So I was willing to do whatever it takes. And I'd really encourage you, if your parents, do whatever it takes to get your, ha- your kids into the house of God. And you know what? After a few years, they were raising their own kids and they were bringing them into the house of God. And I just said to God, well, hey, what, what, what's for me now? You know, I'm not a mum anymore. I'm not a grandma yet. Well, I am, but I wasn't then. <laughs> and, and, you know, I just had a real sense. God said to me, hey, you know, your call on your life is till the very last breath you take. And there's so many ways that that I've been able to serve in the house of God, out in the community, loving people, just sharing that love that I have for God, that other people would find their best life and find what God's got for them and their destiny. And uh, it's just been a passion and I don't know where my family would be and where I would be personally if it wasn't for God and for his family that have been an incredible support to my life and my family. So in January this year, 2020, Tim and I moved to Auckland, New Zealand. I was 30 weeks pregnant, which is crazy to move your life at that point. And uh, we left all of our family and close friends behind in Australia. We came here and then in March, we had our very first child. We're so excited and she is honestly the most beautiful, incredible girl ever. I remember one day the midwife came to our house for a visit and she was insistent that Tim would be there for this appointment. So she comes over and I remember she sits us down and she explains to us that after the heel prick test that's done at birth for Lenya, there is a trace of cystic fibrosis in her DNA. When I Googled it, I was just bombarded with negative stories and headlines, shorter life expectancies, um, life-threatening illness, all this kind of stuff. People who have struggled with their health for their whole life and people who have died at young ages. So we had to get some extra testing done to find out whether Lenya has cystic fibrosis or whether she was just a carrier. And I remember the drive to the children's hospital on the day that we were gonna find out. The car was like heavy and it was quiet and it was just Tim and I and Lenya. But I remember as we arrived at the car park, Tim grabbed my hand and we prayed and we said, God, we don't know what this answer is going to be today. We pray that it is not cystic fibrosis, but if it is God, then let your name be glorified in our life. Let your name be glorified in this situation and let your will be done above ours. At the hospital, we learnt that cystic fibrosis is an incurable genetic condition that affects a person's lungs and digestive system. And we found out that Lenya has it. And so immediately this meant for us additional uh, medications before feeds. It means that she sleeps less than other babies and eats more than other babies. It means she needs a social worker. She needs a physiotherapy session every day. She needs a whole bunch of different care and additional care than other children. And that was overwhelming to just be faced and bombarded with all of this information at the hospital in that moment. And we left that day completely confused, no idea really what was going to happen, no idea what this looks like for a little baby as she grows up, but filled with a peace that doesn't make sense. God had filled us with a peace that surpasses all understanding. So in this season, we've been faced with two choices. We can be filled with fear and let that riddle and rule in our life forever and let that cause us to become overprotective and crazy parents or we could walk with faith and confidence that God is in control and that God has his hand on Lenya's life. This whole time, it has been good lifers who have been there to support us and hold our heads up, encourage us and stand with us in faith. When we haven't had the energy to stand in faith ourselves, we have had people that are praying for us, praying for Lenya, praying for my strength, my sanity, and my ability to just be a mum. People on our team who also live with us, which is handy, but who have been here to support us every step of the way. There's a good chance that without good lifers in my ear, with faith and encouragement, there would be times where I would be overcome with fear, but instead I can walk in faith. I'm spurred onwards in faith because I've got good lifers in my world. When I first started going to church and um, the um, emotions and the pressure that I was um, going through, the really dark, dark periods, like, it's hard to explain or for someone to understand what one is going through at that time. Like, it's 
um, really hard to even leave the house and stuff, but I found going to good life, it... Uh, Gave us I motivation. Think, yeah, it gave me yeah, a bit of motivation and I was... Positivity that we needed. I was expressing to Ben, um, like, I was, I really, my, I had some goals. I wanted my kids to be proud of me again and I wanted to treat my wife better because I was being abusive. I wasn't saying nice things to her or treating my kids how I wanted to treat them and Ben started praying for me and um, said that if you want to be that better man, be that better man. Um, God is forgiving, God will forgive you and then I started, after we talked, I started living life like God was there helping me through each day. So I was looking out the front door at opportunities instead of doom and gloom. Life's been getting better and better and I've been treating my wife how she's meant to be treated and my kids have all said different times, wow dad I'm so proud of you, Like you're doing amazing things. And all it's all been to falling into place, how I've, what I've been praying for has actually been coming true. The guys are good life, they're awesome. They're just absolute legends. Absolutely love them. They're so positive and happy and they, they live a great life and show by example to other people how how they want to be. Like it's, mm. it's hard to explain, but I love them all, they're awesome. And that. And that. That's why. That's why. Why the world needs. Why the world needs. Why the world needs a good life. What brilliant stories. And we want to say thank you to all of those good lifers who shared their journey, their yeah. story. And uh, I tell you what, I've, I've been to tears. I've watched a number of those uh, testimonies a number of times. And it's such an honour and a privilege to be a part of that story and be a part of a church that yeah. literally sees um, lives changed. Every one of those people though, as much as a church, we try to give an opportunity and create an environment where people can uh, change, where people can receive Christ, where people can uh, find freedom and discover their purpose and then make a difference. But every one of those people has responded personally to Jesus. Right. They took a step. The first step yeah. was to say, yes, Jesus Christ came to the earth to show us how to live, but yet He died on the cross to pay the price for all of my sins yeah. and for yours. Every one of those people prayed a prayer saying yes right. to Jesus and then the journey of life and growth happened from there. And today, it's an opportunity. You might need to say yes to Jesus for the first time or maybe you're coming back to Him. Maybe there's a moment of rededication where you come back to Christ and say, I wanna, I wanna fire this one up again. I wanna give it a go and I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk this out with God. And all I'm gonna say is that you need to just start with a prayer that says yes to Jesus, come into my heart. There's a journey from there and it's brilliant, but it starts with a prayer. So would you pray today, wherever you're at, how about you pray with me? Pray it like this, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I, thank you so much I thank you so much that you include me, you include me in your family. Despite my sin and mess, I'm a, part of your I'm a part of your family. And I really appreciate that. Really appreciate so, today, so today, I bring my heart to you. I bring my heart to you. And I ask, and I ask that, you'd me of my that you'd forgive me of my sin. I want to leave all that behind. And I want you in my future. In, my future. in every decision, in every decision. From, this day forward, from this day forward. I ask you to come into my heart, to, into my heart. to be the Saviour of my life. And today I make you Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. If you made that decision, if you prayed that prayer, we want to celebrate. We are so, so excited. We remember the day that we first said yes to Jesus and, uh, and we are so wanting to celebrate with you. We would love to help continue on with that conversation yes. and that journey. It doesn't stop now. Right. And so we're asking that if you are on the 
goodlifechurch.online.church uh, platform. In the chat, there's a box saying, I said yes to Jesus. Yeah. And we have pastors waiting to talk to you right now. The best of the best sure. because it's the best decision that you could ever make. But if you're watching on YouTube, please go to goodlifechurch.com.au or goodlifechurch.co. Dot NZ if you're a Kiwi yeah. and uh, and we would love to help you from that point as well. Yeah. It is so, so important. We're excited. Oh, so People excited. making that decision. Yes. How good is decision. that? Yeah. Fantastic. So good. We are so excited now to talk about our Heart for the House offering. We've been talking about it all morning, but this is, I just want to share a little bit of the why behind it right now. And um, I guess I've got three quick reasons why Heart for the House can actually be life-changing. And the first reason is it's honouring the Lord. You see, Proverbs 3 verse 9 talks about honouring the Lord with our first fruits. And it actually talks about the blessing that comes from that. And we don't do it for the blessing, we do it to honour the Lord. And that's the, 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 the cry of our heart as Christians, that first and foremost, our lives and our generosity and everything about us would honour our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just love that, that aspect of Heart of the House, that we get to bring our offering to honour the Lord with our first fruits. And the second reason is to further the Kingdom of God. If you look in the book of Acts chapter 4, and that the church is exploding and God's doing amazing things. And what the early Christians actually were doing were even selling properties and bringing the money from the sale of their houses or sale of their properties and bringing it to the apostles' feet and going, hey, use it for the extension yeah. of the Kingdom. Use it for the furthering of the call of God on the, on the house of God, on the church. Use it to see more souls saved. And I really love that we get to partner through our finances with the extension of, the, of God's kingdom, with the expansion of the house that, yeah. of God that we call good life. And I just think that's so exciting. And the third, the third reason why I love Heart for the House is we get to combine our faith with the, the this presence of God and the Spirit of God for breakthrough. God is a miracle working God. He is a breakthrough yes. God. We get to partner with our miracle, with our finance. As we give, it's actually a faith statement going, God, I trust You that You are my provider, that You're my miracle worker, that You are the one who brings a breakthrough in my life. And so those, I mean, those are three quick reasons why I love Heart for the House and why I'm so committed in my personal life to give for Heart for the House. And I know you can feel exactly the same I love it. I love all of those. But yeah. when you've talked about that we want to further the work of the Kingdom, yes. all of those stories that we've just yeah. watched are there because someone made a way. Someone right. furthered the work of the Kingdom yes. so that all of those people yes. could receive Christ and yeah. grow through every part we of those seasons of life. because of someone else's generosity. That's the brilliant. truth of it, right? So brilliant, we get brilliant. to now sow into the future of other people's lives awesome. as a result. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the how. Yeah. Because this is the first ever time we've had a Heart for the House party <laughs> that was digital. Oh my gosh. That we're looking down a camera. Yeah. Normally we've got the church family in front of us. We can yes. see them, they're flesh and blood. Yes. But we're, we're, we're hoping that at the end of that camera, there's people, there's know, good lifers. We, oh, know, we, we know, we know, we know, we know. <laughs> so we, we, we're not writing things down because it's all digital. And so I want to walk you through that. Yeah. And so we're going to the screen. Yes, we are. This screen oh. here. And here we go. Now, this is the goodlifechurch.com.au website. Yes. Uh, this is the homepage. And if you click on Heart for the House right there, this is what happens. Watch this. Here it comes. Oh, there it goes. And so you've got <laughs> our Heart for the House details. You're going to find out that our heart is always about people, God's people. Right. We get to yes. be a part of yes. reaching, helping, discipling, growing, empowering people via Heart for the House. It's always it. uh, it's always our heart. So you could click on the bit right here, download the vision booklet. Yeah. This is the part where you can make your faith commitment. If yeah. you're saying, this is what I want to give over the next year, and you might want to give weekly, fortnightly, monthly, but a, but a commitment However. of faith that says, I'm looking over the next year to budget this amount as my faith commitment. You do that right here and you and you follow the links and it'll show you through uh, what you want to, and you can say what you want to give for the local cause and for the global yeah. cause. Awesome. And right here, a whole bunch of details. You're going to find our heart is for people right here and you'll see what we're doing globally and then what we're doing um, locally. And there are great things yeah. happening absolutely everywhere. And so Love if you it. want to be a part of that, you scroll down, you can give, you can put out a, a, a standing commitment, an order that you can put through your banking right there. If you put the details there for whatever campus you're a part of, yes. and then also for global yes. right here. So all the details are there. You can make it happen. The details on the website, so yeah. you can get it right yeah. now.
Local or global, I love Fantastic. it. Fantastic, local and global. We're believing yeah. for the expansion of God's kingdom. Yes. Uh, but how about you pray yeah. for us? How about you pray for everyone? How about you pray yeah. for everyone in every campus as we embark on yes. Heart for the House for yeah. another year? It's not a small thing, church. This is not a small thing. This is an endeavour we walk out together. This is a, a faith thing that we do together and I yep. love it. I love the faith step that we are all taking today. So let me pray for you right now. Holy Spirit, I thank You. Wherever everyone is, God, wherever they're watching from, Lord God, in parties or on their own or with their family, however it looks, oh God, I know that Your Holy Spirit is with every single one of them right now. And Father God, as we right now listen to Your Holy Spirit of what You would like us to bring, of what You would like us to honour You with, with our first fruits, Lord God. As we listen to You right now, God, I thank You that You are speaking to every single one. God, I thank You that there is breakthrough on the other side of our offering. God, breakthrough for us, breakthrough for our families, breakthrough for our finances. But God, more than that, breakthrough for other people. God, that there are salvations on the other side of our obedience. There is reconciliation on the other side of our obedience. God, there are restoration happening within families and relationships on the other side of our obedience, Lord God. God, I thank You so much for the privilege that we have of partnering with Your Holy Spirit to see the Kingdom of God expand across this world, Lord God, locally in our communities and globally, Lord God. And we say today, God, we are up for it. God, we wanna partner with You. We wanna partner with the call of God on this house, Good Life Church. We wanna partner with the vision that You have placed and the DNA that You have placed on this house, Lord God, for the expansion of the Kingdom of God. God, wherever You would take us, however You would do it, Lord God, we are up for it, Lord Jesus. And we thank You for the privilege of giving. God, I pray a blessing on every single one as they give and as they pledge today in Jesus' Name. God, I pray for every single one of our campuses, Lord God, Newcastle and Maitland and Toronto, Fossetankari and Auckland, Lord God, every single one who calls that Good Life Church home, Lord God, every single one who will walk through the doors over the next 12 months, Lord God, who may not even know of us yet, Lord God, I pray for them right now, Lord God, I pray Your Spirit will start to work in their hearts even now in Jesus' Name. And God, we thank You in advance for the miracles and the salvations that will happen as a result of the obedience and the faith that is brought today. In Jesus' Name, Amen. 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 Brilliant. It's an honour to stand with every good lifer uh, in every season, but it's an exciting time when we get to bring an offering. It's a party time. And uh, I think it's a great opportunity right now to uh, to worship. Yeah. For us, the worship team to be ready right now yeah. and to lead us. So how about you stand your feet? We're going to sing. We're going to worship. It's over yes. to the team. Come on, let's sing. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. There's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied. We're here in your love. Come on, sing it out. Nothing is better. Oh, there's nothing oh, better than you. There's nothing oh, better than you. Well, nothing is better than you. No, I'm not afraid to show you my weakness. My failures and flaws, Lord, you say the more you still call me free. You give beauty for us. 
ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can come with everything you got. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing oh, better than you. There's nothing oh, better than you. There's nothing. Oh, nothing is better than you. Well, let's sing that again. Oh, there's nothing. Oh, we declare today that there's nothing better. Your presence, your guide, your wisdom, your grace over us, we say thank You. And God, I declare that grace over every single person, every good lifer, every giver, every person standing in faith. Lord God, I thank You, Lord God, that You lead and guide our steps. Father, thank You, Your promises. Lord God, over every giver. Lord God, that uh, that our vine would not uh, fail to bear fruit yeah, in the field. Yeah. Lord God, that You rebuke the devourer. Lord yes. God, You open the windows of heaven yes. over our life. Lord God, we would not be able to contain the blessing. Lord God, I thank You today and I stand with every person and pray, Lord God, Your presence and Your grace and Your strength and Your wisdom for every person in every season. In Jesus' Name, yeah. Amen. 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 Well, we say thank you to every um, single giver. We say yeah. thank you on behalf of God, on behalf yeah. of the kingdom of God, on behalf yes. of all the people that will be impacted with your generosity of your time and your talent. But today is significant yeah. as your treasure for every yeah. person that receives the grace of God because your offering made the way. Thank you. That's right. Yeah, I love it. What a great Sunday. So it's been good. amazing so far. So, now, so good. We've got to go to the update, but we do have to go stick to the update. around. Don't, Should we have don't some think lollies all... first? Sugar, my friend, sugar. No, I sugar have is a the enemy. They can't just be. <laughs> Confession, you've already had more than a couple. Let's be honest. Why would you say that? The funny thing is neither of us could eat red frogs because no. we've done so many years of red frogging that we... Too many. Are, but how good are the red froggers? You get to a limit. The Anyways, put the lollies back. Where were we? The froggers are awesome. The froggers are awesome. Frogs maybe not nice. quite so awesome. Anyway, we are going to go to the, the update, but stick around because at the end Ooh. of the update, because it is a party, we do have a little bit of we a do party have a treat. song for you. Uh huh. So that's going to be fun. It shall be. Yeah, but let's go to the Good Life update. Here it is. Welcome to the Good Life update. My name is Tash and I'm here to let you know what's coming up. It's Heart for the House Sunday. I've got my party face on, you've got your party clothes on, so jump up off the couch and let's go for a 10 second dance break. 10 second dance break. Woo! Real. This is an opportunity to celebrate the generosity of good lifers and the faithfulness of God. Starting next week, we have three hot weekends. Woo! 
Woo! We have Asha Morrison coming to share around emotional resilience. You're not gonna wanna miss it, neither are your friends, so make sure you invite someone. Coming soon, we have a fresh new series on relationships, which will lead straight into our Marriage Matters weekend. For those of you who are married, Oh, that's not bad. This will be an incredible weekend with Chaz and friend Gulo. You will not want to miss it. There's more details coming soon. Head to goodlifechurch.com.au for more information on anything you heard today. Have an amazing week and we'll see you next weekend. Saves me, and after all.